Hello and welcome to the program General Strength. This program focuses on women empowerment and the total cost of sexual gender based violence against women within Liberia. Land is one of the key determinants to livelihood within Liberia. Sexual building blocks for economic growth. Although women and men have the right on the statutory and customary tenure, the rights of women and men are different in origin within Liberia. As a result, women's right to land and other properties are often less secure than those of men. For today's topic, we will be discussing women's right to land within Liberia. First of all, let us understand something about the West African nation called Liberia. When it comes to the owning of land and other property, women are limited in other ways. Our guest for today is Commissioner Kula Jackson from the Liberia Land Authority. My name is Grace Williams, you are watching CTV Africa. We'll take a short break when we come back to introduce our guest, our guest and dive into our discussion. Keep watching. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is a reminder that you are watching CTV Africa. I'm Grace Williams and today we are at the Liberia Land Authority. We are speaking with Commissioner Jackson. Our topic for today is uh, the right of Liberian women to learn. And uh, Commissioner, you are highly welcome to our platform. Uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, you are welcome to our premises. Okay. First of all, we would like to know you. Who is Commissioner Jackson and some of your achievements? Hola, my name is Kula Lane Jackson. I am a lawyer by profession. Uh, prior to coming to the uh, Land Authority to this position, I serve as the Program Officer for Land Law Reform with the Den Land Commission, and then uh, I begin the in-house counsel for the Liberia Land Authority. And uh, uh, until my nomination by the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency George Manewia, on the 5th of February, and then which I was subsequently confirmed on the 8th of March, 2018. So, Commissioner Jackson is a lawyer. I also work for the University of Liberia as the chairman for the Department of Social Science. So, Commissioner Jackson is not just only a lawyer, but also a teacher and also an associate of the uh, Heritage Partners Law Firm. What is your uh, take or your own standpoint when it comes to se sexual gender based violence worldwide? Well, uh, Women are partners to men and not slaves to men. Uh, we as men should see women as our help partners and not as our personal property that we pay money for. Thank you very much. And uh, what can you say about the legal policy change in 2009 by the Land Commission? Well, uh, the issue is that uh, land is a key factor of production. F currently, we have before the national legislature, I mean the Senate, mm -hmm. we have the land rights bill that is pending and uh, we are asking the Senate to pass that bill. We, For the new law, we have four categories of land. We have private land, we have public land, we have government land, and we have customary land. Okay, among those land, which one are women entitled to? Women, women got right to own private land, to oh. own land in their own name. Oh, okay. Because, as you may know, once you are a Liberian citizen, you have the right to own land. So, a woman who is a Liberian citizen has right to own land in her own name. Commissioner, there are times that people will say, okay, you are female and you don't have the right to inherit any land your father left you uh, by bed, you go and marry after uh, your father has had you, you go and marry, your husband will take care of you so you don't have any property here. What is the take on that? Well, uh, I think anyone of that perception is wrong okay. because women has right to inherit property. I think you know of the inheritance yeah, law. Yeah, yeah. So women have right to inherit property and women also have right to own land. So to deny women their right to own land, I think that's a, that's a gross violation of their rights. Okay. 
So you were talking about your policy put, put in place, you were referring to the bill in the House of Representatives? No, in the, the, the House of Representatives have already, already passed, passed it, the passed only is before the Senate. Before the Senate. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think is the sticky point now that you haven't really addressed that issue? Well, uh, I can't just speak up directly to the sticky points, but civil society has their own points, uh, and also women groups. Women I think is one go or the women land rights stack force had their own point. So everyone wants this uh, bill to pass when it becomes an act. It should be in the best interest of everybody. There should be an equal protection for all actors. Be it a woman, be it a youth or an elderly person or every librarian should benefit from that law. So I think there have been some points. Everyone has their own points that they're trying to push forward. And I think the the Senate is also working on that and I think we hope that pretty soon they will pass on that law. Okay, uh, looking at the fact that there are a lot of traditional parties when it comes to women and uh, where they're supposed to stop, do women have special limitation when it comes to their or uh, owning their own property? Because there are a lot of traditional leaders that will say, okay, <laughs> for their benefit of tradition, this is where women stop. Uh, I want uh, us to understand that social change is taking place, okay. society is being transformed, and uh, we are copying best practices from other countries. So I don't think tradition should stop any woman or should stop women from owning land because women are the primary users of land. And if women are the primary users of land, they should have right to own land. Okay. So our second question on take here is, uh, now that the land commission is focusing on empowering land administration, enhancing the rural law, and addressing land dispute, that is from 2011, how is that process going so far? Well, uh, our, our process is going on good because we are in a transition. Yeah. As you may be aware, we with the passage of the Act establishing the Liberian Land Authority in 2016, we all the land functions from the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Mm -hmm from mines, I mean, then lands, mines, and energy in uh, Sandria. That means we are taking onto ourselves because the act has four distinct mendes areas. We have land policy and planning, which I'm the commissioner responsible for that. We have uh, land administration, we have uh, uh, land use, and then we also have uh, administration and customer services. So. We are in the transition and uh, we are bringing onto ourselves other functions. So the land authority is going to be a one-star shop. And that one-star shop is going to help to minimize some of the problems. As you may also be aware, there is an act against the criminal conveyance of land. So anyone doing double sale or dubious sale, even the buyers, and that law does not exempt anyone. Even legislators, law or legislators, ministers, government officials, land commissioner, even my, including myself. <laughs> so the law is there and uh, we are trying to ensure that our law is enforced to the letter. So we have been working along with the Ministry of Justice to see that indeed those who come in conflict with the law can be prosecuted. Commissioner, you are a very powerful person. I uh, follow your legacy. Uh, uh, some part of uh, this uh, beginning of this year, you, you launched a general based uh, tax force uh, against women discrimination for uh, land rights in Liberia. Can you uh, say a little about that? Well, uh, to show that the land authority respect the rights of women, a general unit was launched sometimes uh, last week, and the the gender unit now is in a formative stage at the Liberian uh, Land Authority, and uh, we are thankful to Landessa. They have out to sponsor our our. our gender coordinator for a period of two years, so we are grateful to that. And uh, we have also seconded some of our staff to our uh, to that particular unit, uh, as you may be aware, budgetary constraint. This is a new government and we're just starting. And uh, you can also be aware that we support it because at the just uh, end the summit in uh, Brussels, uh, the president made mention of women's rights and the rights to protect women. So we are doing our best to ensure that we implement that. Wow, I want to know a little about this office because you just took over uh, from this uh, government tradition period. period. Uh, there are problems, there will surely be some lapses or things like trying to uh, attack with or trying to put things in place. We are talking about 
that people are doing dubious ad that is selling to this person, another person will go and sell it to another person. It's so confusing. Can you say a little about that? Well, uh, we, you, we ourselves must help ourselves to make Liberia a safe place mm -hmm. because they attract history where people have killed people because of land, people have chopped people up because of land. So what we are doing, uh, a month ago we were in the southeastern region, the southeastern region of Liberia, we visited Sano, Maryland, River G, Grand Cru, and in, uh, in Sano. Our point was we are carrying on a massive awareness because some of our people are not aware. Because, for example, if somebody say, Grace, I have a land to sell, and uh, but that land, if you buy it from me, you need to build a house in a very fast manner. And like what we saw, we say in Liberia, you quick, yeah, quick, you have to build yeah. a house quick, quick. Yeah. So you should know there's a red flag. Yeah. Because if someone sells a property to you, it means that that individual has relinquished all interest in that particular property. So they cannot tell you, look, you need to build a house fast. fast. Is they're selling a vehicle to you and tell you, spray this vehicle for you carry it to Banga or yes, do or do not yeah. or do not drive this car in a day. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that there but is something wrong somewhere. somewhere. But and also we need to do due diligence for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do we follow the procedure before we purchase a land? Do we do investigation in the communities? Well, do how we will you write there? Because this is one of the serious problems we have. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Jackson or Mr. Jackson, can you please label the process <laughs> involved in getting on land? Because people don't know. The people, especially the female, we don't know the process involved. So we just go somebody call us in the corner and be it hundred dollar US. I give you a lay. Uh, my mother has that same experience back. You, you see the problem is that uh, mm -hmm. the first thing if someone bring a title to you and mm -hmm. say the title is what they call a D. Okay. And say, Grace, I'm selling a land. Okay. Can you just ask them, say, look, can you give me a photocopy of your tattoo D? Okay. And then if you have the photocopy of that tattoo D, you go at the archive at the D registry. Okay. I think there's an amount charge. And then you do due diligence. Wow. You conduct due, due diligence. And then the archives will either give you a certificate of discovery or confirmation that indeed that deed do exist yeah, that means that you are taking the you will take you recall the volume and the page number okay. and the year who granted that deed, that land to a particular person through that they will search if they find it they will confirm that indeed that land is there but mind you you need to also be careful that sometimes even though it confirms that the deed is there but apparently someone may have sold the property to another person because one key interest is once you can identify that a land do exist the next thing you have to go into the communities and ask okay you got to go into the community and, and ask. ask after going to the uh, after, after, and you go, go to, to the, the community and you need to ask. ask and you ask and then maybe someone will say yes indeed he owns this land and then you need to also put that that, that if you need to do a survey note you know contact a registered land surveyor okay. that person that surveyor must have a license number and then from there you need to put it both on the print and the electronic media okay. to check to put it on the announcement on the radio and then you also need to do citations to adjoining properties owners okay because you need to ensure that whatever you're doing is transparent instead of paying your money to someone and the next day the person vanish in the air and one of the things I will admonish you, those administrators, be careful with those administrators. Yeah. Because someone had a piece of property since 1960. He, he or she is carrying 50 acres on that prop on that deed. Maybe his father sold. He didn't know. Because each time you sell, there will be an extraction. Oh. If you have 50 acres and you sell 10 acres, if 10 acres was sold, you ensure that indeed. So you, you show 10 acres and then there will be about 40 acres. But say somebody from 1960 or 1950 still carry 50 acres D. How come? How come? The country is so small. And people Everybody selling, people really, selling. Yeah. So you got to be very careful. So you yourself, we all have to help ourselves. This is what we say. Before now, before a survey is conducted, the land authority must grant that permit. Wow. 
so i will hold you right there if you are just joining us this is a reminder that you are watching ctv africa i'm grace williamson today we are at the liberia land authority we are in a conversation one of the best liberia have that is commissioner jackson he's so brilliant when it comes to the land issue he knows how to discuss the issue so if you want to go away do not because i'm going to take a short break and i'll be right back keep watching Welcome back viewers, if you are just joining us, this is a reminder you are watching General Stream on CTV Africa, I'm Grace Williams and today we are the Liberian Land Authority. We are speaking with Commissioner Jackson on Liberian Women Right to Land. Commissioner, you are highly welcome. So uh, as I said, welcome back for our discussion. My question now is, um, what means is the Land Authority putting in place to protect Liberian women? But, uh the first thing is uh, just by launching and having a gender unit here tells you that indeed we are in full readiness to protect women's rights as it relates to land. And uh, also uh, even the uh, draft land rights bill that is before the Senate, that land rights bill there is, uh, also capture the rights of women. It's because when it comes to the customary land, category. Mm -hmm. Women has rights. This is why now this time this law will ensure that land revert to our people. So our people going to have right to the land and women women are no exception. There are some instances or some uh, time but I can still remember after the war there are some dis there were some disputes against uh, the Christians or the Muslim in Lima County but I land dispute and mostly women were affected. That is uh, if you are a woman and there's a piece of land that was given to you by your family, maybe your older brother or your uncle will come out and say, ah, madam, you can't have that land because you are female, you will go to your husband's house and this property belongs to us. What can you say about that? We are doing our best to ensure that our women get educated. Yeah. We are carrying on masses of awareness we are having section where our women this is why whenever we are in the field we ensure that women must fully participate because women should be no longer backbenchers when it comes to land discussion because they are the primary users and let's take for instance because women rights to land have been limited yeah so many ways even when it comes to users' rights, women's rights have been limited. They have restricted rights. And we are ensuring that whatever activities we carry on here, women should have own restricted rights. Let a woman own her land in her name. Let she give her deed for, to a bank for a loan to serve as a collateral. And that's economic empowerment. So if a woman, husband is dead and she has that land, she can be able to prefer the deeds for a loan from a bank and then play, a, play her cocoa or needle her rubber or her palm and then she can be able to send her children to school. Let's come back to gender-based violence uh, because uh, there are some traditional practices in Liberia that will tell you if my husband died, um, maybe his brother I automatically become his brother wife. You know the, the, the concept. Well, uh, where we're well from. Uh, this is why you see everything that we do, we are doing it in consultation with the National Chiefs and Traditional Council of Liberia. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you, Chief Zanzan Kao has been very much uh, cooperative. He has been working with us and uh, he understand from whence we come and then uh, he's working with us through the Carter Center, and we are doing a lot of uh, good things here. So our people understand what it is. So women now are playing a pivotal role when it comes to the issue relating to land. And you know, awareness is not an event. It's, it's a gradual process. process. So the issue of leverage, where a woman will have to marry to her, her, her DC husband's yeah. brother, that is, being, that is getting eradicated little by little. Okay. You understand, but from the holistic point of view, some people still hold on to their tradition. This yeah. is why the land authority now will not just want to go down to county level, want to go to even district 
achieved on in clients level to make sure our people understand what do you say uh, to women out there watching now they will be like ah this commissioner is speaking so nicely how can i meet you if i have this problem what are the process involved in meeting commissioner jackson to address your name well uh, the the land authority is a one-star shop we have uh hotlines and uh, we will give that had those numbers to you. It's a hot line. Once you call that line, we are there to ensure. And that's why we we are trying our possible best. We are appealing to the national government to assist us to see that we can have some budgetary allotments to increase our budget to ensure that we have our county land offices. Okay. Because once we have our county land offices, Ma Cheno in Bokonjire will not have to come to, come to Morovia. Morovia. Yes, that's very fun. She won't have to come to Morovia. So if we just have this office with all our county land offices, that will serve as an impediment mm -hmm. for our work. Yeah. So we are calling national government to ensure that there are some budgetary allotment to assist us establish our county land offices. So Commissioner, looking at the fact that some uh, maybe somebody out there, maybe if it's not me hosting this show watching this program will be like I don't want to just go to the authority. I'm not Commissioner Jackson to help me because you are already discussing the issue. How can they uh, relate to your office when it comes to the gender-based tax force um, level? Well, uh, we, we we have a gender unit already set up and uh, our gender coordinator will take over as of the first of January. So the office is open. You can just come and ask for Commissioner Kula L. Jackson, Commissioner for Land Policy and Planning. And uh, our offices are open. Uh, we can assist. We also have we have been piloting the uh, ADR component, the alternative dispute resolution component, and uh, ADR. So you can come and uh, we have our team of technicians that can intervene and go on the spot and do some investigation to ensure that your land, to, I mean your rights to land as a lady, is protected. Okay, my question here for maybe almost my last question would be. Are female allowed to own land and property in every part of Liberia? You address that part, but we still come back to traditional practices. Well, uh, you know, the issue of, you know, Liberia, uh, our country is a patriarchal country, and uh, a patrilineal meaning is male dominant. We come, our, we trace our family linkage from the father's side. Mm -hmm. So men will always show the dominance posture. Yeah. But, uh, I see gender from one's perspective. It's just on equal opportunity between men and women. Yeah. It's just on equal opportunity for, between men and women. So once you can ensure that women have that opportunity, they can ably perform as men. So it's just a matter of, as I told you, it's just a matter of making sure that we are working with our chiefs, our elders, for them to understand. Because that mindset as I told you, changes are taking place. Yeah. And if those future changes are taking place and we are copying best practices, universally accepted standards and procedures from other countries, that means Liberia is no exception. Okay, uh, I will just throw my last question and uh, we'll be out of this office. And what can you say about gender discrimination that like you are talking about? Uh, still, there's a program out called for the He for She, mm -hmm. on the United Nations Women mm -hmm. and uh, General, General Ministry, they even went for that campaign this few days. And uh, I know you are in support of women and you hate discrimination, but will you be willing to support women in all aspects of gender discrimination? Well, uh, I, I support women participation because the issue here is that uh, if you support women participation, your wife, your sisters, your aunties, your daughters, your nieces will help you help yourself. Because if you try to downplay women, how can your wife complement your effort? How can your daughters assist you when you are old? So we need to ensure that women fully participate when it comes to decision making, especially anything that affects land, because women are the primary users of land. Okay, can I have your parting comment? Well, uh, I would just uh, want to call on men and other institutions 
of government to ensure that the mainstream to ensure that the mainstream gender in whatever activities that they do. Because we at the Labyrinth Land Authority, we are mainstreaming gender in all of our activities. And I just want also for men to understand that gender is not just all about women. When we say gender, we mean both male and female. On that note, I want to say a very big thank you in my office is open to CTV Africa anytime. Thank you very much. That was Commissioner Jackson from the Liberia Lane Authority and Grace Williams. Welcome back. My name is Grace Williams. You've been watching CTV Africa and we visited the Liberia Lane Authority today. We spoke with Commissioner Jackson. Do join me for another edition next week and I will always be, be here to bring you the best from gender-based violence and discrimination against women, any part of the world, especially like Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.